All right, so this is day two, video two, really, actually. Uh, it's not necessarily day two, but video two of section 9.2, and we're going to talk about uh, finding common Maclaurin series. Now, you'll remember that we've talked about Taylor series and Maclaurin series. A Taylor series, a good way to think about it is the fact that it is the all-inclusive. It's like a rectangle. And a Maclaurin series is like the square. It has to have a very specific case for it to be what it is. A Maclaurin is a Taylor series that specifically is centered around x equals zero, where a Taylor series can be centered around anything. So that's the difference. They're the same thing. They're found exactly the same way you just have a little bit more complicated situation when you have a Taylor series that's not centered around the x equals zero. Now, there are some Maclaurin series that occur often enough that they should be memorized. They are on your formula sheet. I don't really have a formula sheet just yet, um, but today we're gonna look at where they actually come from. So a Maclaurin series generated by f at x equals zero is p of x equals f of zero plus f prime of zero times x plus f double prime of zero over two factorial times x squared plus f triple prime evaluated at zero over three factorial times x cubed and continues on forever and ever and ever. The more terms you get, the more accurate your approximation is gonna be. All right, so first things first, let's find the Maclaurin, Maclaurin uh, polynomial for 1 over x, or sorry, 1 over 1 minus x. So we're going to go through and we're going to find the derivatives. We're going to find the value at the function. We're going to find at x equals 0. We're going to find the derivative, its value at x a equals zero and continue on in the same way. So first of all, we're going to list the function and its derivatives. So f to the zero thing here, which means the original function, is one over one minus x, or one minus x to the negative one. And then we're just going to take its derivative. Now you can write these out if you need to, but these are the derivatives as we continue to take more and more and more derivatives. All right, and then we want to evaluate each one of these derivatives when x equals zero. So we have one minus zero to the negative one, that's going to give me one. One minus one on the bottom squared is still going to give me 1. 1 minus 1 raised to the third power on the bottom with a 2 on the top is going to give me 2. So my denominator here is what's in the parentheses. It's going to move to the bottom. So that's going to be 1 each time here. So it's really easy to calculate. And all it is is the number that we've got out front. So 2, and then this one will be 6, which is 3 factorial, by the way. And then this one, which is 24, and that's going to be 4 factorial. All right, so remember, these are nothing more than the, uh, are part of, I would say it was the coefficient, but it's actually not. It's part of the coefficient because we're actually dividing by uh, the factorials. This is zero factorial, that's why we don't, and zero factorial is one, so that's why we don't have to write it. This is one factorial, also one, two factorial, three factorial, on and on and on. So when we actually start putting everything in, we've got f of zero, which we found to be one plus f prime of zero, which we found to be one, times x, plus f double prime of zero, 
over 2 factorial, which we times x squared, which we found the f double prime of 0 to be 2. 2 over 2 factorial is going to give us 1, because 2 factorial is just 1 times 2. Then the next one is 3 factorial over 3 factorial. Those are going to cancel out. 4 factorial over 4 factorial is going to cancel out. So we know we end up with 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth. This pattern will continue to give us plus x to the fifth, x to the sixth, x to the seventh. And notice we're not alternating signs. Our signs are all plus. So 1 over 1 minus x is this right here. You need to file that away. That needs to be something that you can recall. Now, but this is actually a geometric series with a equaling 1 and r equaling x. So now, here's the thing. Is this thing going to converge? And if it converges, for what values of x will it actually converge? So those are the types of things we can see and we can start thinking about as we're working these out. Now, we could also generate this exact same series for 1 over 1 minus x with polynomial long division. So we're going to do 1 minus x divided into 1. And this thing will go on forever. All right, now if we're dealing with 1 over 1 plus x, which is 1 plus x to the negative 1, well, the thing is, what, do we, what did we do to change from the one we were looking at previously? All we did was we changed the sign of x. Well, what we're going to find here is as we take all these derivatives, our derivatives are going to alternate signs now. So we have our original function. And when we take its derivative, we're going to have negative 1 times 1 plus x to the negative 2. Now, before we would have had, we had that negative that came out, but then when we had the minus x, we had to multiply by a negative 1 with the chain rule, and that canceled out this alternating sign thing. All right, in the next derivative, we're going to bring out the negative 2. Negative times the negative 2 gives you positive 2. 1 plus x to the negative 3. And then negative 6 times 1 plus x to the negative 4. 24 times 1 plus x raised to the negative 5 power. When we evaluate all these at 0, 1 plus 0 is going to give me 1 to the negative 1, which gives me 1. Here, same thing. I'm going to have 1 here squared, but it's going to have a minus out in front of it, so it's going to give me a negative 1. Here, I've got the 2 on top and the 1 plus 0 raised to whatever power I want to. It's still going to be 1. So I have 2 over 1, which gives me 2. Here, I have negative 6 times this thing right here, which is on bottom. Doesn't matter what x is, or sorry, what power I've got, 1 plus 0 raised to any power is going to be 1. So we end up with negative 6 over 1, which gives me negative 6, also known as negative 3 factorial. And guys, right here, be careful the way you understand it. Remember, that's going to be parentheses around that. It's negative of whatever 3 factorial is. There is no such thing as negative 3 parentheses factorial. The number in here has to be a positive integer. All right, and then this one, 24 times 1 plus x, or 1 plus 0 in this case. So 1 raised to the negative fifth power, going to be 1 on the bottom, 24 times 1. Gives you 24, which is 4 factorial. So when we go and put it back in our polynomial here, 
we can plug everything in and these negatives are going to do what? Well, they're going to alternate the signs of the polynomial. So you're going to end up with 1 over 1 plus x be equaling 1 minus x plus x squared minus x to the third plus x to the fourth plus dot 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 and continues on. That would actually be a minus, but anyway, uh, it would be a plus a negative. Now, the thing is, remember you can think about this 1 plus x as 1 minus negative x. I think we talked about that in the first video, but I want you to kind of see that, and then that right there is what changes the sign. And now what does it change the sign of? It changes the sign of all these even, or sorry, not even, all these odd powered uh, terms. This one's changed to negative. This one's changed to negative. The next one would be negative, x to the fifth. So the odd powers of our polynomial series here are going to be the negatives. And that's where that comes from. Now this is also a geometric series and this one has an a value of 1 and an r value of negative x. So you should be able to identify that and you should be able to, and by the way that is the you know infinite sum of this series and it goes right back to the sum of a geometric series equation that we learned in part one, in section 1. Now, we wouldn't expect to use the previous two series to evaluate the functions since we can evaluate those functions directly. We could just plug in a value and find out what they are. They do help explain where the formula for the sum of an infinite ser geometric series comes from. We will find other uses for these series as well, but you need to know them and commit them to memory. A more impressive use of the Taylor series, which includes the Maclaurin series like we talked about, is to evaluate transcendental functions. Cosine x, all the trig functions are transcendental functions. Natural log is a transcendental function. Uh, e to the x is a transcendental function. There are a lot of transcendental functions. They're functions that aren't tied directly necessarily to uh, algebra, really, when it comes down to it. So if we wanted to do the uh, Taylor polynomial around x equals 0 for cosine x, we're going to find the derivative of cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is going to be negative sine x. The derivative of negative sine x, negative cosine x. Negative cosine x is sine x, and we could continue doing that over and over and over again, as many terms as we need. Now, when we evaluate each of these, when x equals 0, well, the cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0, so it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, it's still just going to be 0. Negative cosine x, when x is 0, is going to be negative 1 sine of 0 is going to be 0 and cosine of 0 is going to be positive 1. So notice we have three numbers here. These two terms are going to go away. So we're going to have one for the first one. We're not going to have one for the second one. That term goes away. We're going to have one for the third term. We're not going to have one for the fourth term. All right, so when we write that out, we have 1 plus 0x plus one, negative 1 half, 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus 1 over 4 factorial of x to the fourth. So what we end up finding out is that term is going to go away, this term is going to go away, and we end up with the cosine of x is equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial, just 2 
plus x to the fourth over four factorial, 24, minus x to the sixth over six factorial, and be 120, no, that's 720, sorry. Uh, so what we notice here is cosine is just the things with the even powers. But this is where it actually comes from. That's all we're doing. So in this case, both this side over here and this side over here are both even functions. That's another way of thinking about it. All right, now when we look at sine x, we'll go through this a little quicker. We're just starting off with sine x and taking the derivative and evaluating those derivatives at zero. When we put it in our polynomial, notice that the only thing that's going to stick around, this term's going away, this term's going away, this term's going away. So we have the odd powers, x, x to the third, and we would have x to the fifth, and x to the seventh. And notice that both sides here are odd functions. Sine is an odd function, and this side over here, since it has all odd numbers, remember polynomials with all odd powers are considered odd functions. All right, now if we do 1 over 1 plus x squared, if we start with the function 1 over 1 plus x, we're going to have 1 minus x uh, plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus dot, 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 continuing on forever. Now if we take and we substitute x squared in for x, then we're going to get 1 over 1 plus x squared equals negative equals 1 minus x squared um, plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth plus x to the eighth. So we take each one of these and as we had it, we put x squared in there. So x squared, x squared squared, x squared to the third, x squared to the fourth, etc. And that's where these numbers come from. Now this is a geometric series with a equaling, neg equaling positive 1 and r equaling negative x squared. So knowing that, we could actually calculate when this thing is going to converge and when it's not going to because we know what the rules are for geometric series. <clears throat> Remember geometric series are going to converge whenever r, the absolute value of r, is less than uh, 1. Now, if we integrate both sides, we actually have over here the inverse tangent. And if we integrate each individual term as far as we want to go, we're going to get this thing over here. And that's going to give us the arctangent of x, gives us the series x minus x to the third over 3 plus x to the fifth, fifth over 5 minus x to the seventh over 7. And that's just from this right here. Just taking the antiderivative of each individual term. So there are times when you're going to have to play around with ideas to see exactly what you need to do to get where you need to go. You may try derivatives, you may try integration, you may try plugging something in and then differentiating or integrating. It, there's just all kinds of things you can do. You can also divide a single term through the entire thing. You can multiply a single term all the, th all the way through the, thing, the whole entire thing. Where you got to have problems is when you're trying to square. I think we talked about this in the first one. Uh, you can't square the 1 plus x and get 1 plus x quantity squared because that means you have to foil this all over here. Uh, in the same way, you need to be careful when you're adding and subtracting a single term from a series as well. Uh, be careful and make sure you're, you're subtracting one term from one term. You're not subtracting 
from the entire, every single term along the way. <coughs> All right, let's do the series for the natural log of 1 plus x. So if we take and we write our function down, then we take its derivative, we're going to get 1 over, uh, we're going to get one, 1 over 1 plus x, or 1 plus x to the negative 1 power. Um, gee, what happened there? Hey, we've already done that. So everything's just shifting down 1. And we can go ahead and use the exact same things we had just a second ago. So once we get here, we've already done this. And in this case, when we do the 1 plus 0, we get the natural log of 1, which is 0. So we're not really adding anything. We're just shifting all our coefficients over a little bit. So notice here, the natural log of 1 plus x and you can go back and look at how it compares to the series for just 1 over 1 plus x. All our coefficients have just slid over 1. So you get 0 plus 1x plus negative 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed plus negative 3 factorial over 4 factorial x to the fourth and so on and so forth. So when we simplify that down, we end up with this right here. Now, what about e to the x? Well, if we take its derivative, we're going to get e to the x, and 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 e to the x. And if we evaluate those at 1, we're going to get 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So when we put everything together, we're going to end up with e to the x is equal to the series 1 plus 1x plus 1 over 2 factorial x squared, or 1 half x squared, plus 1 over 3 factorial x to the cubed, plus 1 over 4 factorial x to the fourth, which simplifies down to this one right here. So here's the thing. e to the x, I always think about it as it's got everything. It is literally the definition of a series where it has all these terms. Now you're going to notice that if you look at sine and cosine, they have half these terms and alternate the sines. So that's one way that you can use to remember these things is draw that correlation between them and what's different between two. Um, and I think of e to the x as everything including the kitchen sink because it's got all the terms in there. And then I'd say, I figure out which ones I've got that come out of it or which ones I use from the e to the x to make the different sine and cosine or whatever. I just, that's just the way I remember things. Uh, I have to, I, and that's the way your brain works is you draw a correlation to something that you already know. So if you can put one of these in here and just have some rules as to what goes away, what stays and all that stuff, then you can remember a lot more in information in that way than just trying to cram random facts in your head. All right, that's all of Section 2.